G'day. Well, today we're going to look at some software for designing solar and battery storage systems, whether it's on grid or off grid. It's called Solar Plus. Probably seen the name before. Okay, let's get into it. So we'll get started now. As I promised yesterday, we're going to look at some design software. So yesterday we went through the, the theory behind designing a solar and battery storage system, whether it's for off-grid or battery backup. Uh, and there's quite a lot of formulas. And I said it was really simplified and we didn't cover everything. We didn't cover things like maximum demand calculations, um, cable sizing, uh, protection requirements, uh, a lot of regulatory stuff. We didn't cover that. So just the mathematics. So now I'm going to uh, introduce some software called Solar Plus. Now, as you can probably tell from uh, our shirts here, um, <laughs> Solar Plus is our company. Um, the history is that um, Two of us, Laurie and I, who used to just do installations and designs, were struggling for years with um, the methodology that many of the, the smaller um, operators use, which was a spreadsheet, some data sheets, a calculator, a laptop. And every time we did a, a design, it was more or less starting all over again. Uh, every time a new panel came in or a new inverter. So it was uh, around that time, about seven or eight years ago, that Laurie said, Glenn, he looked at me and said, Glenn, we need software. We need to do this better, smarter, more efficient. And that's how Solar Plus was born. Uh, we got initial, we partnered with the Solar Council and they helped develop um, in terms of funding that as a joint venture. Uh, we've since taken over Solar Plus wholly as our, as our product. So we've now moved to the point where we have a product that is an end-to-end -end solution for people who sell, design and install uh, it's compliant to standards. It produces all your documentation. Uh, it's a, a workflow process that can have can be role based, so you can have more than one person using it in different roles, uh, and those roles can be limited. Um, it uses the power of the cloud to collect the data that we need for good designs, uh, imagery, and also um, products that are available on the market. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to Rachel, and she's going to run you through the process of doing a design using Solar Plus. Okay, I've gone straight. Hi everyone, welcome. Um, I may get tongue tied. I'm not used to doing this like Glenn, but we'll just see how we go. I'm, I'm going to show you how to do a quote quickly uh, for an existing customer that I have in Solar Plus. So this is her contact page. And um, on this page is a lot of information, uh, including the quotes I've already done. Now I can duplicate an existing quote, which will copy everything identically on the, from the original quote. And then I may tweak solar panel layout, I may add batteries, uh, or I may do a completely different quote, but keep the same energy consumption profile and keep the same panels drawn on the roof for now, the same surfaces. But I'll show you a new quote for Claire and show you how we go about that. So this takes us to the contact page for the specific quote for this customer. All you need is a name and address. If I start typing the address in, I have a list of options. And the more I type, the more it's reduced, and then I select the correct address. This is just to make sure you're in the right place and you can tweak this on the mapping page. So yes, there's a lot of inf information. I'm going to put in the NMI for this site and a meter number because this transfers to the line diagram and to the system manual that goes to the customer at the end of the job. Then we can move to the energy page. You've, you've got a lot more options here, but we're doing this quickly. The energy page is where we select our con energy consumption profile and our electricity tariffs for this customer. Now, Glenn spoke a fair bit about load profiles the other day. Uh, I'm going to pick one that's fairly sensible when you have solar and batteries together. So quite a lot of daytime loads. Rachel, can I just interrupt? Um, what say you've actually got some real load data from the customer? Yes, you can upload interval data from available from the distributor or retailer. You can also upload logged data from third-party monitoring software such as Solar Analytics or um, 
switched in. Okay, you can also edit these profiles as well to tweak them to your needs, say for a sporting club, which has a very different profile over a week. So once we've loaded a consumption profile, we can go move on to a tariff. These are filtering options here. So I'm just going to filter by distributor and choose a tariff that I like to use. I like to put the figures in the name so I know exactly what's in them. And that will then also appear on the graph um, for the, in, one of, in one of the graphs in the proposal for the customer so they know what your savings are based on. I've put a uh, can I interrupt tariffs. again, Rachel? Yes. Uh, so with those tariff plans, um, uh, do, 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 what, do users have to add those tariffs? We, no, we have a, a lot of built-in tariffs, a lot. <laughs> they, are, they can be overwhelming and they can change quickly. And depending on where you're located, like um, in Queensland, I believe tariffs and in Northern Territory, maybe South Australia tariffs are quite stable. But in Victoria and New South Wales, they seem to vary with every customer. So in that case, I recommend creating a couple of your own that you... Um, and just informing the customer that that's what you're basing savings on. But we do, they are updated yearly. Um, sometimes that doesn't keep up with the rate of change of retailers. Rachel, just a follow on question. So um, I'm actually typing the answer, but for those who are probably listening, the question is, um, does it work in New Zealand? Yes, we have tariffs for New Zealand. Great. The whole system works in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just checking my, oh, sorry, I probably went a bit quickly then. I was just checking that my figures were correct. Um, if, if your figures aren't correct in these tariffs, you can, you can have issues with your proposals. But when, when they're, they're right, they're fantastic. Now, before you move off the screen, there's a question that relates to that profile. Um, the question is, how can we um, adjust a load profile if we don't have interval data? Well, it is tricky. You, it's based on, you can analyze bills for an average kilowatt hour use over a year or a month or a three month period. So you have to make some guesses. You also need to understand their significant loads and how they're using them throughout the day. Can I, can I add to that as well, Rachel? Mm -hmm. uh, just to clarify the question, because it might be that it's the, the um, where you can customise the loaded profile by clicking on the edit button, that might address the question as well. Yeah, it is. So, so once we go into here, um, so you can basically, you can, you can adjust your load profile however you want to. You can customise it on a, on, a, uh, at, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis by each day. So that's, that's where, like, for example, Rachel said about sporting clubs or church roofs or other examples um, where you might not be able to get some integral data, but what you can do is you can customise this profile, you can save it with a name, and then you can reference it for, for a, another proposal with a similar pro profile. So hopefully that answered the question. That's exactly the question. Okay, okay great. Over to you, Ron. Once we have a, a profile and tariff loaded, so all of it's, I guess it's good to state that these are endlessly editable and you can customise as much as you need. We're now moving to the design page. So I'm going to, we can navigate to the map page or the design page. I'm going to go to the design page. And this is where we enter our inverter and panel information and a whole lot of information associated with the design. Now we can build from scratch. We have a huge library of inverters and modules in, our, in the background in Solar Plus with data sheets uploaded for your use already. Uh, they, they need to be in there so we can calculate your solar performance and battery performance. I've got a few system packages already here. I'm going to pick one with solar and batteries. I've got a quick guide. Uh, based on energy consumption profile, I'll just open that again. A recommended sizing, I'm going to go slightly over that. But that's recommended for that energy consumption profile for this customer. So this has loaded a, 
an inverter that's commonly used. I can change it. I've got many loaded. And I can easily change my panel configuration here. So I've got two inputs on this inverter. And I currently have 11 on one and 11 on the other input here. If I, I can change that to 12 panels on this input. What, and What's happening there, more. Rachel? You changed it to 12. There's a, there's a message popped up. Yeah, it's gone. So our nominal system power was 6.6. .6. It's now 6.9 kilowatts on a 5 kilowatt inverter. So this is just indicating that we're over our, that arbitrary limit to claim STCs on this inverter. So we've gone over the 1.33 multiplier. Can I interrupt on that point? So for those who are not from Australia, um, STCs are an Australian incentive program with some peculiar rules, um, such as oversizing rules. Uh, this doesn't apply. But there are some electrical safety rules. Uh, so, for instance, if you went to 22 panels, what would happen, Rachel? If we go back to... to oh, scroll to across panels to 22 here, panels. We've got yeah. a few other issues there. <laughs> Not only are we, are we outside the limit to claim STCs for these panels on this inverter, we are over the, um, the maximum input allowed by the inverter manufacturer. So we're up to 967 VOC max, uh, which is more than 600 volts, for, which is the maximum for a residential installation in so Australia yeah, and New yeah, Zealand. So it has to be in a restricted area if it's between 600 and 1,000 volts, which, and it's also, um, we've over, we should only put seven and a half kilowatts on this inverter. You, we can, you can argue with me about that all day, but just let's say, say that for now. So <laughs> that, that's, that's based on the, the manufacturer's recommendation. Yes. All right, so we'll go back to 11 and 11. And uh, we've also got a lot of information in these tabs regarding your DC voltage drop based on your string, um, your cable runs and your cable size. We've, we can put in our protective devices, we can put in mounting. All of this I preloaded in a system package so that you only need to edit what you need to, just maybe a couple of fields. But there is information already in there ready to go. Um, if this was just a straight solar and solar and inverter, straight to the grid, no batteries, I may add an energy meter for monitoring and that will also appear on the line diagram. I've got a question for you, Rachel, from Hamish. Yes. So Hamish says, does the software do any automatic design, i.e. can you enter consumption data and address, specify the system size for up to but no export, then the software yields an optimal design, the number and location of panels? Well, that would ent entirely depend on the roof. And no, it's not going to track that for every address but we do have a quick guide based on the energy consumption profile for solar and battery size to last, to provide eight hours of storage, as well as um, a significant level of solar input to your power needs or energy needs. You, you create system packages. So you create, set up a few systems that you sell a lot of, and you can tweak these as required. I've got a follow-up question. Um, can we do this for a pre-assembled integrated BES, like an Alpha ESS a hybrid system? Yes, you can set that up as a system package and you, you can load it for a, a given address, assess whether it's right, go straight to the quoting page, send it to the customer. And one more question. Uh, can you do parallel strings on a single MPPT? Yes, depends on the inverter that you select. So the inverter that you select will just, uh, will let you, depending on if it if it's on its input current on each input on each MPPT, it will allow you to do parallel strings. Thank you. So what have we got? So we can put two strings here on this one input. On input one, I can make that two of eleven and ignore input two. I just go back to one. And uh, Manaz asks, can we add our own inverter and panel data? No, but you, you have, it needs to be entered by us in the background so that that information is available for you to view when you're designing a system. So your, your VOC max, which is calculated for the lowest temperature, 
at the nearest weather station to the site um, and your optimum voltage range. So if there is an inverter or panel or battery or energy meter or monitoring system that you would like to use and you can't find it in our library, then please email the data sheet to our support um, and we will add it the same day so that you can use it, start using it as soon as possible. I might I've had the that. same question several times, by the way, which is, can we use this for off-grid? Yes, absolutely. It's great for off-grid. <laughs> and we, ha we have a whole lot of customised proposals for customers based on different system design. There's residential, solar, solar and storage, off-grid, commercial. Uh, there are a lot and they're customisable. And yes, we're about to move to the battery storage page and we can designate whether it's off-grid. You can add generator details as well. So, so we've got our AC, I'll just continue on down this page. We have AC voltage rise calculations here that go from the solar inverter all the way to the point of common coupling. So if you enter your lengths and your cable size, it will calculate your total AC voltage rise. I'm going to move to the battery page because I've, this is a system package where I've entered battery information. I've added a, an inverter and some batteries. Now these are lithium batteries, so Solar Plus knows to uh, place them in parallel. If you selected a lead acid, it would know to put them, you'd have 24 say, and it would know that they're in series. And there's some other information you can add to that. Now I can choose if it's, this one's hybrid. It's, well, this will effectively be an off-grid system with the grid used as a generator, just in case. I think it will cover most of their loads. Um, and we've got off-grid. You can add in your uh, KVA size of your generator and estimated fuel consumption per hour to feed into performance reports calculations. I'm now going to move to the mapping page and put some panels on the roof. Can I just add, add one point on that previous page um, the, with the, the consumption um, and there was a minimised tariff. So anybody who's doing commercial um, installations, that means that it will actually, and obviously this might not, I don't think this is applicable in New Zealand or in some states of Australia, but in most states it is um, where, you, where you can um, um, demonstrate your peak demand shaving for a commercial opportunity. So one's on, one's self-consumed, the other one's minimised tariff, and that shows up as a separate graph in a commercial proposal for a commercial opportunity. Yeah, so that will model um, battery usage only at peak uh, when you're paying the most for your electricity, so at peak times. Yeah, sorry, Rach, just thought right. I'd mention that one. Back to maps. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot here. I've made this an off-grid, but that's all good. I'm, I'm getting some questions which you'll cover soon, but uh, okay. someone's asking, can we do a return on investment calculation? Yes. Will you cover that? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's get these panels on the roof. I draw a surface. I'm not using this whole roof, so I'm just going to put it to about there. So it's important to put, make sure that that red line is facing the way you want your panels orientated. The pitch will default to 23 degrees, but I can change it manually in this field here. I'm going to, I'd like some panels northwest and northeast. There's a few obstructions on that northwest roof, but um, for now we'll just ignore them. I think the panels can squeeze in. So I'm going to select input one on northwest and input two on northeast. Now the top of the map is true north. I'm just going to tweak these to I can adjust my, manipulate my surface to get my panel layout the way I want it. It's, um, I've made my mouse a bit big, so it's a bit harder to play with. Rachel, what say there's a chimney somewhere on the roof? Okay, so what you can do is say I want to put, um, so there is a, there is a, a, a chimney-like structure on this one. Instead of just putting 11 panels on, I can select from the whole inverter. I'll just 
Now all the panels available from the system appear on that roof and I delete by holding down the Alt key or an Option key on a Mac, I can take out the panels where there's an obstruction. Great. So you can do it like that. I'll just take that to input one. I just want to get 11 and avoid most of the, I've reduced my edge padding, which is handy in um, triangular roof shapes. <laughs> yeah. I'm struggling with it. I'm struggling with a large mouse and oh, it's almost there. Okay. What have we got? That, oh, I've got 11. Yeah, that will do. So 11 and 11. There's one I prepared earlier. Then we can go to, you can create, once you're happy with your image, you can create a PDF of that to enter into a, that will be included into the proposal for the customer. And the important thing here is that we've got 22 panels on our roof that matches the 22 panels in our system design that I'm looking over here on the left. And there's many options. You can flip to landscape. Um, you can change spacing between panels and there's other ways, ways to draw panels as well. So I'm just showing you a simplified version. Um, I just got a question related to this image. It says, does the Google map enable you to calculate the roof pitch? No, it doesn't. You enter that manually, but you can, if you've got a um, street view, you can give it a rough guess. And as you, as you're working with this more, you can, all, you can sort of guess based on the, once you're familiar with roof, with house design, you can kind of, you get a pretty good idea of tilt. Looking How can we the see the roof, the um, street view in Solar Plus? The street view is visible from the contact page. Uh-huh. Yep. Or you can open up Google Maps. So we can do it all from inside Solar Plus. Yeah, yeah you can. The, yeah. So when you on your contact, contact page, when you enter the address for the customer, you will get a street view and a bird's eye view of the property. Can you use other mapping imagery? Yes, you can use Metro Maps, uh, which is included free with Solar Plus. And if you can also use Near Maps if you're prepared to pay for that. Um, you can also upload roof plans if the house hasn't been built yet. Uh, you can upload roof plans and manipulate them to face the right direction according to the map. Keith asks, what about if you want to put the panels in landscape as opposed to portrait? Yeah, there's a flip button here. Oh, that's a bit clever. And I can just click and drag to manipulate where they, where they place. Now this is, this, there are other ways to draw panels that give you more control of, over how they're laid out. Um, I'm not going into that. It's more advanced and it comes with training. Um, it's, it's not difficult. It's just takes time to show you how to do it. I've got another one for you. Um, uh, John asks, uh, as a maintenance tech, he would like to know, can you show the working gap between the top and bottom of panels? Yeah, we've, we default row spacing at 20 millimetres and module space, spacing at 17. So you, there is a gap included by default, but you can adjust that. I hope that's what you mean. Yeah, so row spacing and module spacing can be adjusted. Yes, yeah. So if I, um, if, if, if I was on tilt frames, if I put row, row spacing at, I know, I know this isn't right, but I'll just dump just so we can see them on the roof. And Peter Green's asking about, uh, in New South Wales, there's a service called Six Maps. Um, can we use Six Maps? Not, you, you can upload images from Six Maps uh, as if you were adding a roof, a roof plan. There is discussion, I think I'll throw this to Scott. There's discussion about... Yeah, yeah I can answer that one. So, so the answer is yes, you can use six maps, maps images. In fact, you can use images from any source you want. You basically upload them and then lock into, into this screen and that's the, that's the image that you can use for your proposal. Six maps, last time we spoke with them, I don't believe that they had an API, so we can't link to them through technology. Um, so, um, but, but you can import any image, so you, you can also import drone or um, in Queensland, Queensland Globe, globe images. Um, so, yeah, you, you have those choices. Uh, 
I've got another question about the roof layout. Can you calculate shading? You can estimate shading. Uh, let me have a show you. I'll go back to full screen. So we have site details here where you can put in an export limit. Uh, if your inverter is larger than your export limit or if you're on a swirl line, for example, you can limit the amount going out to the grid. Shading, this is, this is a monthly average and it's designed for use with another product which calculates um, percentages per month of shade. So if you've got one of those, and Glenn talked about it early on in the webinar series, I think a sun eye or something similar, you can enter the value. So one is full sun and uh, 0.7, for example, would be 70% sun, 30% shade. So you can guess, you can guess, um, guesstimate, but it's recommended to use third party product. It's, it's very tricky to estimate because um, trees grow and, and conditions change on a site. Rachel, people are loving this page and there's a lot of questions coming to it. I'll just throw them some more at you. Um, what is the edge padding? Is that the clearance around panels? The edge padding is the space at the edge of the surface that you can draw panels within. Now, if you, if you look here, I've got this surface set at zero and that's going right up to the edge of the surface. If I set my edge padding, it defaults at 0.2 metres, so 20, 20 centimetres. If I change it to half a metre, it means those panels have to come in from the edge, all sides not just top and bottom. Great. Uh, Richard Hopkins asks for larger arrays such as commercial buildings. Uh, how can you account for maintenance access ways such as 600 mil walkways? Yeah, you can. You can put, um, with, with commercial, there's a, another recommended way to draw panels and that's to, uh, so say I would draw them in sets of two. I should mention that this page is being redesigned uh, completely and so the features are improving. So say so I had a large commercial system, I might draw some panels here, put them on. It's not going to work because my array is a bit large for that surface. So say I put two rows here, I can draw some more and draw a couple more here. I'm just going to put them in out, out of the way because we're getting interference from two surfaces here. So say so you can create walkways in that way and just keep drawing blocks of panels however you need to. But we ha we're undergoing a major redesign of this page um, and it is coming soon. Great. Thank you. Shall I move on? Yes, keep going. All right. So once you've... Once you're happy with your panel layer and your system design, you can go straight to your quoting. So this is if you're selling a lot of standard systems that are just grid connect, you can go straight to your quote page. I'm looking for my little X button. Where did that happen? Now oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. You can go straight to the quoting. and email the quote to the customer. But I'm going to show you the reports page first. And this is a fantastic page to check your design and to preview some of the images that will be going to your customer. The Solar Plus produces a range of fantastic graphics. So one is the, the house that shows you the division of energy flow um, based on this system design. So total in, the energy consumption was 15 kilowatt hours per day. And we expect on an average, a daily average throughout the year, that grid supply will be two kilowatt hours. The rest will be supplied by solar, eight kilowatt hours and battery, five kilowatt hours. And we have our average daily energy production based on a year. 32% um, going to loads of solar, 24% going to battery and 44% exported. So there is a lot on this page. 
we have our monthly averages. So it's not the same all year. This is based on a, an address in Victoria. So it is calculated according to that. I don't know if anyone, if Glenn or Scott want to say anything about these graphics. Um, otherwise, I'll just move on to my favourite graph on this page. Um, what, I, what I would add is um, Solar Plus is, is a completely responsive technology platform. So you don't need a separate app to be able to, if you do in-home presentations, um, this, basically you just use your login on the device you're on. You don't need a separate app. Um, so Solar Plus will work with any screen size. Obviously, it's better with a tablet device rather than a mobile, but it will go right down to a mobile, mobile phone size. So it makes it nice and flexible. If you know, On the fly, if you do need to show someone through, you can show this page anytime. Okay. So I've, sh oh, I've done this in reverse, sorry. I'll just generate that chart. This is one of my favourite graphs in Solar Plus for assessing uh, whether you've uh, matched your solar and battery design in line with customer expectations. So we have, I'm just loading a new, a new one. This is looking at the worst time of year. You can change the date range and this is sort of around the, the winter solstice. Even though it says April up here, that's just loading and it's going to take us to the top of the page in a second. Um, but yeah, this is sort of the most grid dependence this customer will have throughout the year. The grid uh, power usage is in gray. Uh, this black line is estimated battery state of charge based on, I think I had it at cycling daily at 80%. So that gives you a really good idea of whether you've sized your solar um, and batteries, just repeating myself here. This state of charge line, that's sort of average throughout, throughout the year. They may, it's pretty good at the moment, but they may want to add a little bit more solar. They might add some DC coupled. Um, they, the customer will see the solar produced. They will see the battery self-consumption. And the blue line in the background is the um, energy consumption profile that we selected on that um, energy page. Um, I have a question regarding export. Yeah. Um, is there any way to minimise export in the design? Or assess it and minimise it. Well, yeah, you can set, you can reduce the amount of export in a system design um, in this under the site details tab. So, otherwise, Solar Plus will calculate um, whatever the system can, whatever it's not using, it will export. But if you can limit that, and it will reduce the export, and maybe put more in the batteries. Um, in off grid, it's more more power um, unused. So can we see the amount of export? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> solar exported is right. here. Yep. In that so graph. you can just tweak your design to get that down lower. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You can, yeah, you can tweak your design to do that as well. Um, the, so the, and we've got, we're modelling battery charging as well and estimated grid supply. And you can change this to just to really make sure you've got the right design for the customer. There are some other features on this page and you can download the proposal that goes to the customer to preview. I'm going to just take you straight to the proposal instead. So once you're happy with your design, you've sent it to the customer, this is what they're going to get. So this is a solar and storage proposal. Um, like I said, we have many different proposal templates that you can use for off-grid, for, for solar, for commercial customers with a lot more cash flow analysis in them. Um, we, will, I will, we will get to the return on investment graph in this proposal. So this is our default photo, but you can change this to anything you choose. We have an introductory spiel. All of these are very flexible to change, but this is, the, this is one of our commonly used defaults. So we've got the performance expectations. This is going to the customer. They get this as a PDF, so do you. The solar components, estimated performance, storage components. This graph is about uh, whether, when a, if there's a grid outage at midnight in midnight in July, how long are they going to be able to last just using their solar and batteries with no generator, no grid? 
this is the um, the roof layout now this is um using metro maps so clearer roof lines more recent photos sometimes it's good to it's good to flick between Google Maps and Metro Maps just to see differences in shadows and we have savings estimates so this is your first year after having solar this is what the customers currently base paying for electricity based on the energy tariff we put in this is the first year with solar and the first year with solar and storage so it's a very significant reduction this is where they're in credit um, these times of year they're in credit for their bills Rachel I've got a, a, a couple of all well, two questions um, Jeremy says can you show reduction in performance over time as the system ages Yes, you can. You can model in panel degradation. Um, you can do that at the at the. You can do that for the whole all of your quotes at the um, business settings level. You can have module degradation modelled for a set of system packages based on the panel you're using, or you can um, change it for an individual quote. The second question is: Who owns the data created on this web page software? Glenn? So, so yeah, I thought it was a um, well. Actually, it's the it's the the data belongs to the account. It's so we have no rights to you know to sell that data to a third party. It's also stored securely using Google Cloud. Now, here is our return on investment graph. You can add things to stretch it out you can add in annual maintenance I think I've got a I have a um, in year 15 I've put added in a two thousand dollar upgrade so it flattens off a bit there but this is based on the price I put in and that is it, the price may not be accurate at all but um, we're looking at around 10 year return on investment so the customer receives that and we've got some assumptions here. So I've put my upgrade provision in year 15, $2,000. Now I'm going to move down. After you're all about the system design, uh, there's a, a page where you put in your information. Now I've stolen Glenn's business profile, just for, the, for this example. And after that comes the money section, the quote. So. This is extremely flexible in the way you can have it laid out. I've just set it up uh, as a summary uh, with a little introduction. We have the retail price, including GST. I've added a solar rebate just so you can see where it is on the quote and the STCs. Now these STCs are calculated um, in line with the ATO requirements. So there's no, so this is a residential, or this customer's not registered for GST. So this is taken after, oh, hang on, I've lost my words, Glenn. <laughs> uh, so you know, essentially a question that comes up quite a bit when there is STCs, which is a, an Australian incentive program for solar, is um, are we compliant with the ATO's ruling? Yes, we are. So um, there is often confusion, certainly with newer companies, about how you calculate uh, the tax owed, uh, the GST owed on a uh, installation. It's calculated uh, on the total amount before any discounts, and then you can apply the discount. I think you mentioned something about um, before any benefit. Benefit, or yeah, before any benefit. So the, the GST is calculated on the total amount before any benefit, uh, and then you can apply the benefit thereafter. Okay, and we also have the option for commercial companies to include the GST component on the STCs for those for customers who are registered for GST. Um, Rachel, someone's asking where is the pricing pulled from for batteries and inverters and panels? Okay, so in our library we have we have our huge database. You you go to that library and select the components you want and they go into your inventory. Now in your inventory you can price those components. So you can put in your whole your buy price and your sell price or your buy price and your markup. 
you, you have those prices, but they can be hidden in the quote. They don't have to be displayed. Thank you. So we've got, um, there's, some, there's some particular boxes ticked here. So the quote expiry date is shown based on your business settings default, but you can change that for an individual quote. We have payment details listed. We have quote acceptance um, and an estimated installation date based on what you select. And you can change that when you send a quote, you can make sure it's not on a weekend. Uh, there's a question from uh, Keith from New Zealand. Uh, if we use it in New Zealand, can we do it without the STC options? Yes, of course. They, they were just extra things I added in. Um, yeah, you don't have to add STCs at all. They're optional to add. They're op optional to set up as default applied to quotes. Yeah, very flexible. So say, oh. yeah. Mate, I was just going to, if you could just scroll up a little bit, just, uh, I don't know if you were going to cover this later, but the actual, um, the um, payment schedule. Yeah. Um, um, you, shall, is it okay if I cover that? Sure. Yeah, so what I was going to say, so, so with the payment schedule, we have the ability where you can set up event triggered um, invoicing and receipting. Now, we also link out to zero accounting system via um, an API. So that means that any installers that are using zero, this links completely seamlessly with your zero account. But not only that, it will process payments and create the receipts in Solar Plus. Um, and we also link to another system called Stripe Pay, which is a, a standard merchant facility a lot of installers use. Um, and so that means that the invoice goes out with a pay now button. All your customer does is click on pay now once they've signed off remotely, if you're not face to face, that will create the invoice. Um, and uh, they basically can pay now. Receipt goes, uh, money goes to your account, receipt goes to the customer, um, it gets put into your payment log, and it also moves the job on to the next stage. So it's a, it's a, it really does automate that payment, uh, payment process as well. Okay, I'd, uh, I'd like to show that quote acceptance. So did you want to say something, Glenn? Oh, it's just a question from Richard. Um, how much do you expect customers will spend annually on maintenance over the lifetime, for instance, 25 years? Are these costs accounted for in the break-even time? I think you mentioned a 15-year upgrade cost. Is that the inverter replacement cost? I, I, that could be anything. It, it, I just put it in as an example. You don't have to put anything in. Um, so I you just, can set the re inverter replacement period? Yeah, and you can set your own an annual maintenance. It will be set at zero for all fields until you start changing it. Thank you. So I just want to show you that quote acceptance page online to see what it looks like. I think it's this one. So when you send a customer a quote and they, they click a, a big button in the email and it takes them to this page which lists, which lists the quote and the terms and conditions. They can sign this online and they're all, if Stripe is enabled, then they can pay their deposit using a credit card. The terms and conditions are here. I'll, these are also in that proposal. These terms and conditions are included with all accounts in Solar Plus and they are um, compliant for CAC retailers. So if you're using these, you're applying for CAC retailer accreditation and you use these terms and conditions, they will pass. And we um, keep an eye on, Solar Plus keeps an eye on these kinds of things. Uh, make sure we're updated and you're updated with the latest requirements, not just with terms and conditions, but with, with all other boxes that need to be ticked. Now, when, when a customer approves a quote, uh, they, you'll both be sent an email and then you can start your syncing with zero. Um, or sending them an invoice in another system. So we're going to, that was that one. Once you've won the job, well that, sorry, that's the quoting, that's all the quoting done. I'm going now going to moving on to the, after the job is won, to the install and commissioning area. I just wondered if Glenn and Scott wanted to mention anything before I show you these couple of pages. Sorry, I'm busy typing on uh, this. Uh, we've had like 51 questions, uh, wow. Rachel. So okay. you, you're, you're really um, 
spurring them along. This is great. So I'm glad we've got Scott and me on the question and answer field. I'm only passing a few through to you. Um, can you scroll up a little bit so we can see the, the single line diagram? Yeah, um, yeah. This is the in, this is after you've won the job. Um, you've got your install page, which you can email or download as a PDF. Uh, this is great for when you're on site. It contains the line diagram. Now, because I entered a lot of information in my system design page that you may not have seen, like my protection devices, they are listed here as well. Um, my voltage DC voltage drop, my AC voltage rise is included. My system details and the line diagram. Now this is for installation and it also goes into the system manual for the customer. Man, I got a bit of a comment. That. Sorry, Glenn. Go Sorry, ahead. I've got a sort of question which I'll comment on. Um, uh, Anonymous is asking, uh, do we calculate performance for tracking arrays uh, for off-grid and uh, inter-row spacing for shading? Uh, there's always features that are just not yet there. So when people request stuff, we put it into our development roadmap. Uh, tracking systems, which are, you know, at the moment really utility scale, not very common for residential, uh, are still in the roadmap. But uh, I'd say that you, the, the beauty of this software is it's always improving. You don't have to upgrade or buy a new version. It just gets better and better. Uh, every, every month or so, we do a new release and, and, and upgrade it. Yeah. Okay, and also on this page, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. We've got the, the cable, the voltage drop, voltage rise, starter, the roof layout. Uh, one of those new features that is coming is that you'll have be able to edit this page to identify the locations of equipment on, on um, the map so you can mark where the switchboard is, where the inverter and batteries are located. And we have our cable data, bill of materials, and you can add any other documents that you need to pass on to your installer, any images or notes. Yeah, can, okay. I, can I just add to this page, Rachel? Yeah, sure. So the beauty of this as well is that um, now on the first page when we started this proposal, we can allocate an installer to this job. Now that job, that, that installer will receive a notification to say that the job's ready to go and, and you, can in, you can send this job pack to them. Um, and as you'll see, that so once, so if you're a, 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 um, a business where you may have two or three different teams, you may have a team leader on each team. Um, so your documentation and your compliance process is basically solar plus will step you through the whole process. So this is the first part of the compliance process and information process for the installer. And you'll see how it's, it steps them through. But now they've basically got ownership of the information through their device on site. And that, and that carries through with the workflow. Thanks. Got a question um, from Stuart. Does Solar Plus calculate the framing componentry? No, it doesn't. Is that, is that in reference to price, Stuart? I, th I think Stuart means each, every little piece that you need. Maybe clarify that question if you can, Stuart. Yeah, we can, calc we can you can have a, a um, you can set up mounting per kilowatt per panel or per meter, same, similar, and work out your own cost per unit of, of that that you choose based on your roof type. Uh, we, we, we can't calculate each end clamp, mid clamp or um, splice, um, splice joiner that you need at this stage. So I'll move on to the commissioning. Um, just so once we are we all sorry risk management. We have a a, a risk management page where you can well, before you leave that SLD, but you don't have to go back to it. The question is, uh, can we include the grid protection board in an SLD? So any secondary protection requirements for a commercial installation? There is a box. Uh, there is a box for grid protection. I'm, I'm actually, that's a question for Laurie. Um, I'm not sure that you can, that it appears anywhere, but the thing with the, the line diagram and certainly in the system manual is that you can edit it in a third party uh, PDF editor and you can, you can change your line diagram or add boxes to it yourself. 
it's quite, so quite a related nice. question is about can you add your own documents to the, the user manual, such yes. as safety certificates, NOCs? Yes, you can. And I'll, I'll just I'll go through that after this page. So this is the risk management. Um, so we've got arc flash calculation for batteries, the calculator here, and we have a checklist of risk assessment. And that picks up the specific battery you've chosen and the battery chemistry. So it's, it's, it's system specific for your design for this quote. So Glenn, um, I don't know if you want to say anything about this. Oh, look, I'm excited by this because yet again, um, we're responding to changes in safety standards and reflecting that here in Solar Plus so that your documentation is compliant. We're also saving you doing um, some complicated calculations. Uh, for those who were at my previous webinars, I was showing the arc flash calculations and that spreadsheet that I've produced. That's now embedded into Solar Plus, so it does it for you using the data sheet for the particular battery you select. Okay. So Scott, did you want to say anything about the swims that was coming up? Um, yes, so, so this gives you your calculations for arc flash and the required um, PPE, I believe is the right acronym. Um, and we are working on a site-specific swims statement or declaration. I'm not sure on the terminology there, it might be different in different states. Um, but that release, I believe, is a matter of weeks away. So your swim statement straight from Solar Plus site-specific. Great, that's really cool. So the, there's a question what, about um, does it include uh, the solar audit? So I presume that means system commissioning. Yeah, so this is your commissioning page. Uh, this can be completed on site where you can fill in, where you can enter serial numbers separately, but you've got a commissioning checklist. You may want to add your own as a document to the system manual as well, but there is a checklist you can go through to, and I've completed this. If, again, it's specific to the system that you've designed. Uh, there's some extra notes you can put in and you can identify the installer and um, the, the CEC, in, sorry, the CEC installer and electrician who sign off on the job. You can right. download... Can I, sorry. Can I put my hand up with just, just something there? Um, you'll notice if you scroll up that that also covers all of the, re the, the requirements of 5139. Um, so your new battery standard, we, um, if, you, if you bring in storage into a system, obviously this is all dynamically created, but also that feeds into your handover manual. So we've got all of the required checks for your 5139 compliance as well. Okay, so yes, once you've completed this, added the documents or images as well you can add. Um, you can add in the, the PDF brochures for the components you've decided to use. And this is what goes to the customer. So they get this system user manual, manual, sorry, the commissioning date. You can add the CES at the end, you can add your own commissioning checklist, any images of the system that you'd like and it contains all the information you are required to give to the customer, including the estimated performance of the system, how the system works, the shutdown procedure, um, what the components do, what you supplied, warranty information, recommended maintenance and procedures, a logbook, uh, the commissioning report, and a line diagram plus the brochures at the end. So I will, and it's got your information, contact information, your company's name will appear regularly throughout this manual as the first port of point of contact for the customer when they have an issue, if they have an issue. I just, this is, and this document is generated according to the type of system you have designed. So if it's just solar and uh, a grid inverter, it will only apply to that. If it's an off-grid, battery system, there'll be information about generator maintenance um, and how an off-grid system works. So maintenance schedule here. So I'm going a bit quick, but um, I want to leave a bit more time for questions. Our commissioning report, the data sheets of the main components, you can add more, you can add further documents at the back and the line diagrams in here as well. Can I summarise it? It includes everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll stop there on that line diagram. So we've got a question that relates to that, which is a very long question, but in summary, it basically says, 
Now, Tom has an all-in-one unit, so it doesn't have a separate inverter, separate battery, separate changeover switch. Um, uh, can we uh, use that sort of system in our software? Uh, an all-in-one, like a... Yes, a, think of an Alpha hybrid, ESS, hybrid for instance. Inverter? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah, now for ESS, a Goodwee hybrid inverter, a Solar Edge, you can you can set that up as um, solar only. You can add batteries to it. When you have a hybrid inverter, it will automatically load that as your battery inverter, and then you can add the batteries. Yes. Good. And Warren says, uh, can the software prompt designers the standards required as they make up a customer design so they meet all the Australian and New Zealand standards? It could be only assumed that the software is compliant. All standards will need to be listed to the customer and the designer on the documents on the documents post design. The standards are listed in the system manual that apply. Right. I, well, that, I think that's that's enough. One yeah. more. Um, is there pricing plans for people who want to use Solar Plus for designing of the system? and getting performance reports only, or is the pricing only for the use of the whole software? I think that's a Scott question. Yes. Um, the answer is the pricing's for the whole system, um, but I'd be more than happy to show you, you know, basically show you through um, the everything and see how it relates to your business. Because look, so, some people ask those questions when they're using other, maybe other CRMs um, or other platforms. So um, sometimes that's, you know, understanding how they want, want their, their workflow to go. So I'd be happy to answer questions um, if you flip me your email. Uh, Mark asks, uh, is it possible to scan panel inverter codes to assist compiling panel information? Not yet. I Sorry. like that one. Is that one for you, Rachel? Or for, I, I do uh, have some answers on that one. We, I mean, you can upload a CSV file with serial numbers in it. Um, the, not yet, you're right. But yeah, keep yeah. going, Scott. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was going to say that the answer's not not yet. We've we've looked into it quite deeply. Um, unfortunately, most most of the the, um, the 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 ideal way would be to get it through the STC providers. But I'm um, sorry, the um, um, your brokers, your your, your green green um, green bot and various other providers because they have the scanning technology. But all of their scanning technology is proprietary at this stage. So we are looking at solutions for that. But most installers find it really easy just to upload either a CSV or an image, and that image gets included in the installation manual if you need it. Uh, there's a question is, uh, which I'm answering by text, which is, uh, is it possible to have uh, a copy of that PDF um, so that you just scroll through showing um, the system design? And I just said, yes, I'll upload it. Or I'll attach it to the description um, in the YouTube video. We'll make sure there's no private data in there. Yep. So, Rachel, okay. anything else you wanted to add? Um, not really. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to su suggest if you quickly just showed the... Um, um, we've had a few questions about inventory. If you just wanted to flick into inventory, yes, um, sure. if we've got time or are we limited, limited to the hour, Glenn? It is 12. Yeah. yeah. And uh, one for Scott, uh, do you do free trials? Um, we, okay, we don't actually have a free trial, but I'm more than happy. Anybody who wants to run through one-on-one -on -one, um, as a, a presentation to answer any questions you have, obviously in this kind of session, it's not as personalised as we would like. Um, so I'd be more than happy if you flick me an email at scott at solarplus.co um, or you can make an inquiry through our website. Um, I'll be able to um, set up a time with you. It takes about 45 minutes and that's a personalised presentation and on how it relates to you and your business. Um, incidentally, I might add to that, for the... Um, if, when, we, when new customers, customers join us, we have a, a very thorough onboarding training and account setup process. So we don't just, you know, um, you don't jump on board and we, and we let, you, let you go with it. Um, Rachel does, does training account and setup. It is a process that really only takes about five days with a few sessions or a couple of sessions. Um, we get your account set up all ready to, to, to rock and roll for you so you hit the ground running. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it. It's 12 o'clock, um, but there's still questions pouring in. I'd like to point out that uh, Solar Plus, we do regular webinars, 
And so um, based on all those people who have registered for this particular webinar, we'll send you out notifications of our ongoing training webinars. So you really got a fast track view of the whole package here. Uh, we go through in a slower, more detailed um, presentation of particularly when there's a new release or, or new features. Uh, so don't worry, you can get your questions answered after this, but you can also ask them in the, in the comments field on the YouTube video, which will be uploaded tonight. So um, thanks very much. And, and Scott's just posted his uh, email in there, uh, scott at solarplus.co. He loves to get emails. Thanks very much, Rachel. You did an awesome job. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll see everyone tomorrow. Um, we'll continue on our magical journey of solar and battery training. Okay, thanks, see you then. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks to everyone who attended today's Solar Plus training as part of the series on solar and battery training. Tomorrow, we're going to look at inverter sizing and some of the standards around installing a solar and battery system. Hope to see you then.